Water and fire don't mix, as the saying goes, and that's certainly the lesson we've learned after the Zaka fire. It's been three years since the massive fire burned much of our back country, yet our water supply is still dealing with its effects. It was 4th of July fireworks that nobody wanted to see. Sparks from a grinder igniting tinder dry brush northeast of Buellton. Three months and 240,000 scorched acres later, the Zaka fire would end up being the second largest wildfire in California history. But the effects of the Zaka fire have lasted long after the ashes stopped smoldering. One of the greatest impacts the fire has had is on our water supply. The reason for that is due to the location of the burn area, half of it in the San Ynez River watershed. Gibraltar and Lake Kachuma are both supplied by the San Ynez River. And it's really that watershed that is the primary source of drinking water for the South Coast communities. The initial impacts of the Zaka fire on our water supply came with the first rains, as runoff, laden with tons of ash and debris, made its way into Lake Kachuma and Gibraltar Reservoir. It washed the mud, debris, and burned stuff into the reservoir and, and filled up a substantial portion of the reservoir. We lost about 2,000 acre feet of capacity in the reservoir. And to put that in context, um, the total demand for water in the city in a given year is about 14,000 acre feet. So that's a big, big chunk. Since Gibraltar Reservoir has slowly been silting up for years, city staff and local water agencies had already made plans to compensate for the drop in capacity. They worked with the other users on the river and the Kachuma users in order to have an agreement that will let us take water that would have been stored in Gibraltar and allow us to store it in Kachuma instead and have it delivered through the Kachuma works rather than directly from Gibraltar. Ash and debris, otherwise known as organics in the water, aren't a health hazard in and of themselves, but they do cause problems during the water treatment process. Currently, chlorine is being used to remove the organics from the water at the beginning of the water treatment process. The chlorine takes care of the organics, however, the process also produces unwanted disinfection byproducts. And the disinfection byproducts are potential carcinogens. So in order to make sure that we uh, were effectively treating the water so that we weren't getting excess amounts of disinfection byproducts, we changed our treatment process at the Cater treatment plant to add powder activated carbon, which allows the organic material to adhere to it, and then we can settle that material out of the water and uh, prevent these disinfection byproducts from forming. So what happens with all that powdered carbon when it's done doing its job? At the end of the day, we get sludge. Just essentially everything we put in the water through the treatment process gets removed, and what we're left with uh, in removal, either in the sedimentation basins or the top of the filters during backwash, is the sludge. Before the Zaka fire, sludge was produced in small enough quantities that it could be dried on site at the Cater Water Treatment Plant. After the fire and the increase in powdered carbon use, the process had to be changed. So we had to rent initially a mechanical dewatering machine, which is a filter belt, belt press, and that is the only way that we're able to keep up with the sludge production. So that mechanically dewaters the sludge, um, wherein, and then the, the material is, is hauled off to landfill. The extra chemicals and powdered carbon, along with the disposal of sludge, have driven up water treatment costs significantly, costs that are ultimately borne by ratepayers. We have absorbed these increased operational costs without making extraordinary changes to rates. We had planned for annual 3.5% rate increases, and we've kept more or less to that plan. However, the, about $2 million of increased operating costs at Cater had to be absorbed within that, within that plan. Um, it, Cater treats water not only for the city, but also for Montecito and Carbonduria, so their ratepayers have also seen the impact of the increased water costs because they pay their share of the treatment. To comply with stricter federal regulations on disinfection byproducts that start in December of 2012, Cater will undergo a major upgrade. That upgrade eliminates the need to use chlorine at the beginning of the treatment process. We're planning to treat it with ozone when it first comes in, which is a much more effective oxidant, which means that it will more effectively take the precursors, the organic material that causes the disinfection byproducts, out of the water. 
whether from reducing capacity of our storage facilities or from changing the way we treat water, the Zaka fire has had a lasting impact on our water supply and will continue to do so for years to come. Fortunately for water users from Santa Barbara to Carpinteria, we have a diverse water portfolio and a water treatment plant that will provide clean, safe drinking water even longer. To find out more about the city's water system, visit santabarbarasca.gov forward slash water or call 564-5460.